Hello dear friends, I am Dr. Sujay, one of your mentors from Sadi Medic and today I will be talking about urethral injuries. So just some basics about uh, some background information. Most urethral injuries are associated with well-defined events including major blunt trauma such as uh, motor vehicle accidents or falls. Some injuries may also result from uh, penetrating injuries. Straddle injuries may cause both short and long term problems. And atrogenic injuries to the urethra after traumatic catheter placement, transurethral procedures or dilatations is not uncommon. Urethral injuries can be classified into two broad categories based on the anatomical site of the trauma, posterior and in anterior. Posterior urethral injuries are located in the membranous and prostatic urethras and are, more, and are most commonly related to major blunt trauma such as motor vehicle collisions and major falls and most of such cases are accompanied by pelvic fractures. Injuries to the anterior urethra are located distal to the membranous urethra. Most anterior urethral injuries are caused by blunt trauma to the perineum, straddle injuries, and many have delayed manifestations appearing years later as a urethral stricture. The diagnosis of urethral trauma is made with retrograde urethrography which must be performed prior to insertion of a urethral catheter to avoid further injury to the urethra. Extravasation of contrast demonstrates the location of the tear. Further management is uh, dictated on the by the findings of urethrography in combination with the overall condition of the patient. Trauma to the main urethra must be efficiently diagnosed and effectively treated to prevent serious long-term sequelae. Patients with urethral stricture disease secondary to purely managed traumatic events are likely to have significant voiding problems and recurring need for further interventions. Many of these men have significant orthopedic and neurological injuries as well. Rehabilitation requires deconstruction of the urethral tract in a manner that does not interfere with the healing process. Now coming to the anatomy, the male urethra can be divided into two portions, the posterior and the anterior. The posterior urethra includes the prosthetic urethra which extends from the bladder neck through the prostate gland and then joins the membranous urethra which lies between the prostate a prosthetic apex and the perineal membrane. The anterior urethra begins at that point and includes three segments. The bulbar urethra courses through the proximal corpus spongiosum muscles to reach the penile urethra. The penile urethra then extends through the pendulous portion of the penis to the final segment, the fossa navicularis, which is invested by the spongy tissue of the glands of penis. This is uh, well demonstrated in this figure. The prosthetic urethra, the membranous urethra, the bulbous urethra, the penile urethra and the fossa navicularis. Study of the urethral anatomy can guide about the potential areas for injury. The membranous urethra is prone to injury from pelvic fractures because the uboprosthetic ligaments fix the apex of the prostate gland to the bony pelvis and thus cause shearing of the urethra when the pelvis is displaced. The bulbar urethra is susceptible to blunt force injuries because of its path to the perineum. Stradar type injuries from falls or kicks to the perineal area 
can result in bulbar trauma. The penile urethra and fossa navicularis are protected from external trauma because of their mobility. However, they are prone to atrogenic injuries during catheterization and manipulation. Injury to the prostate urethra occurs when a shearing force is applied to the prostate uh, membranous junction in blunt pelvic trauma. The prosthetic urethra is fixed in position because of the attachments to the pubo-prosthetic ligaments. Displacement of the bony pelvis from a fracture, a type injury, thus leads to either uh, uh, tearing or stretching of the membranous urethra, leading to uh, its tears. Anterior urethral injuries most often re result from blunt force blow to the perineum, producing a crushing effect on the tissues of the urethra. The initial injuries are often ignored by the patient and the urethral injury manifests years later as a stricture. The stricture results from scarring in, used by ischemia to the site of the injury. Penetrating injuries have also been seen in the anterior urethra due to external violence. No, the etiology. So the etiology can be classified as a blunt or penetrating. In the posterior urethra, blunt injuries are almost always related to massive deceleration events such as falls from some distance or, a, or vehicle uh, collisions. These patients often have a pelvic fracture involving the anterior pelvis. Blunt injury to the anterior urethra most often results from a blow to the bulbar segment such as occurs when straddling an object or from direct strikes or kicks to the perineum. Sometimes blunt injuries to the penile urethra occurs in penile fractures, but this is very rare. Penetrating trauma often occurs at the penile urethra and etiologies uh, include animal bites and gunshots and stab wounds. Insertion of foreign bodies is another rare cause of anterior injury. It is usually a result of auto-erotic stimulation or may be associated with psychiatric uh, uh, disorders. Atrogenic injuries to the urethra occurs when difficult catheterization leads to mucosal injury with subsequent scarring and stricture formation. Catheter placement is the most common cause of atrogenic urethral trauma. Atrogenic uh, urethral injuries also occur after radical prostatectomy, pelvic radiotherapy and other abdominal pelvic uh, surgery. Posterior urethral injuries are most commonly associated with pelvic fracture with an incidence of 5 to 10 percent with an annual rate of 20 pelvic fractures per 100,000 population. These injuries are not uncommon. Anterior urethral injuries are less commonly diagnosed emergently. Thus, the actual incidence is difficult to determine. However, many men with bulbar urethral strictures recall an antecedent perineal blunt injury or straddle injury, making the true frequency of anterior urethral injury much higher. Penetrating injuries to the urethra is rare, with major trauma centers reporting only a few cases per year. Now, what is the prognosis? The prognosis is excellent when managed correctly and here I would uh, stress on the word correctly. Problems arise if a urethral injury is unrecognized and the urethra is further damaged by attempts at blind catheterization. In those instances, future reconstruction may be compromised and recurrent stricture rates rise. When managed well, 
these men have an excellent chance of becoming totally rehabilitated from a urinary standpoint. Continence rates approach 100% in all series, particularly if the bladder neck is not involved. Potency status is probably related to the extent of the injury itself rather than the management of the problem. Several series have demonstrated only a small group of men losing capabilities following the urethroplasty when they were potent uh, following the initial injury. The main complication following reconstruction of posterior injuries is recurrent stricture. When managed as standard urethroplasty techniques, recurrent structures requiring major repeat operation should be observed in only 1 to 2 percent of cases, although 10 to 15 percent may require either dilatation or incision of a small recurrence. Endoscopic realignment by experienced physicians appears to produce similar results when performed 5 to 7 days post-injury. Rare infectious complications may occur despite the presence of organized pelvic hematoma. Complications of re reconstruction of anterior urethral injuries are similar to those observed in posterior urethral repairs. Coming to imaging studies, first is the computed tomography and magnetic resonance imaging. These studies have become even more important as trauma services rely more on initial CT scanning as well as the major as a major imaging modality. The trauma CT commonly performed may well miss out lower urinary tract injuries to the urethra and bladder and thus any suspicion of urethral injury should lead to performance of these studies in addition to any others. MRI scans can be used to assess urethral injuries in patients with pelvic fractures. The membranous sphincter is often intact and the injury is instead at the membrano bulbar junction, suggesting that surgical reconstructions can be undertaken, preserving sphincter mechanism and improving post-operative continence. Retrograde urethrography is a standard imaging study for the diagnosis of urethral injury. It is performed by gentle in injection of 20 to 30 milliliter of contrast into the urethra while occluding the meatus with a balloon of a Foley's catheter inflated in the fossa navicularis. The film should be taken in a 30 degree oblique position unless this is not possible because of the severity of the pelvic fractures and associated uh, patient discomfort. A urethrogram allows for the identification of the site of injury and the assessment of the extent of the, any injury. Any extravasation outside the urethra is pathognomic for urethral injury. The distinction then arises between a complete and partial rupture but it is not always clear. In a typical image for an in, uh, incomplete rupture, there is extravasation from the urethra, but the bladder is also filling up. In complete rupture, there is massive extravasation without bladder filling. This urethrogram shows a, a partial rupture, partial tear. So there is, as you can see, there is extravasation and the bladder is also filling up. In this urethrogram, the bladder is not filling up. There is extravasation, a little bit of extravasation and the bladder is not filling up. So this is a complete tear. Further imaging studies include uh, cystography. Uh, which allows for a concurrent bladder in injury to be excluded in the acute setting. Pie in the sky finding 
on cystography is a classic feature a contrast uh, specified opacified floating bladder is seen high in the pelvis due to a large pelvic hematoma and usually indicates a uh, urethral disruption when a delayed repair is being considered voiding cystography performed through the suprapubic catheter demonstrates the bladder neck and prosthetic urethra uh, urethral anatomy and a loss of proper surgical planning coming to cystoscopy it can be a valuable adjunct in the evaluation of a male urethral injury in the acute setting the feasibility of early endoscopic realignment can be determined in the detailed setting the quality of the urethra can be evaluated for surgical repair when the cystoscopy is combined with retrograde urethrography and cystography a more accurate estimation of stricture length can be made facilitating decisions in operative st uh, strategy flexible cystoscopy is preferred over retrograde urethrography in suspected penile fracture associated urethral injury now we will uh, coming to staging of urethral injuries classification and uh, of urethral injuries is based on location and retrograde urethrography so we can have in the anterior urethra we can have a partial disruption we can have a complete uh, disruption in the posterior urethra you can have a urethra that is stretched but intact a posterior urethra which is uh, which has a partial disruption or a posterior urethra with a complete disruption or in severe cases we may have a posterior urethra complex where bladder neck and or rectum is also involved now coming to management the approach here considerations initial management decisions uh, to uh, consider associated injuries and overall stability of the patients so basically this just means that when you have a patient first save his life look uh, after the life threatening conditions and treat them and then uh, you can consider about the urethra the initial emergent uh, treatment remains controversial but the mainstay of therapy includes drainage of the urethral uh, bladder often with a placement of a suprapubic catheter and primary endoscopic realignment of the urethra if possible immediate urethral repair is relatively contraindicated because life threatening injuries have to be corrected first urethral injury should be undertaken after the patient has stabilized when hemorrhage is less of a concern if open repair is planned it is better to allow the pelvic hematoma to subside prior to the procedure penetrating and anterior urethral injury should be explored however defects longer than 2 cm in the bulbar urethra or more than 1.5 cm in the penile urethra should never be emergently repaired these are best reconstructed after resolution of other injuries so that tissue transfers required for the repair can be done with proper planning surgical therapy traditionally the posterior urethral injuries due to pelvic fractures have been managed by initial placement of a suprapubic catheter and subsequent delayed repair this is the safest approach because it establishes urinary drainage and does not require either urethral man manipulation or entrance into the urethral hematoma caused by the fracture of the pelvis this approach allows a formal repair 
to be carried out several weeks later under controlled conditions and after a resolution of the hematoma. The suprapubic catheter can be safely placed either percutaneously or via an open approach with a small incision. Ultrasound guidance uh, is a useful aid for a percutaneous approach. Ultimate repair of the posterior urethral injuries can be performed 6 to 12 weeks after the event, after the pelvic hematoma has resolved and the patient's orthopedic injuries have stabilized. It is often carried out via a perineal approach and repair consists of mobilizing the urethra distally to allow direct anastomosis after excision of the stricture. To prevent tension on the anastomosis, the distal urethra can be mobilized to the penoscrotal junction. Further length can be achieved with division of the septum between the cap uh, corpora cavernosa and with inferior pubectomy. A urethral catheter is left indwelling to stand the repair and the suprapubic catheter may be removed. Transpubic approaches for this repair have also been described and may be used in men with fistulous tracts complicating a membranous urethral injury. Combining a perineal and abdominal approach with pubectomy provides maximum exposure to the prosthetic apex. Now, early realignment of the posterior urethral injuries is also a treatment option. It can also be considered. This has been performed uh, at the time of injury using interlocking sounds or by passage of catheters from both retrograde and anterograde approaches. Also, direct suture repairs have been attempted in the immediate post-injury period. Another approach could be careful insertion of a urethral catheter under fluoroscopic guidance by a urologist experienced in that approach. These approaches have a disadvantage of possible entrance into and contamination of the pelvic hematoma with ensuing uh, hemorrhage and sepsis. Early endoscopic realignment within one week post injury using a combined uh, trans uh, urethral and percutaneous uh, transphysical approach may be safer. If performed five to seven days post injury, the pelvic hematoma would have stabilized and the hemorrhage is less of a concern. The patient's overall condition would also be improved by this time and sepsis is less of a concern. Bulbar urethral injuries often manifest months to years following the blunt, per, uh, following blunt perineal trauma and present with decreased urinary stream and voiding symptoms. The diagnosis of urethral stricture is then made with urethrography and cystoscopy. These strictures may be managed with excision of the stricture and end-to-end -end anastomosis via perineal approach. Most are short less than 2 cm. Larger strictures may require flaps, penile uh, fascicular, uh, fascicular uh, cutaneous or grafts, say buccal mucosa, to achieve a tensionless anastomosis. Coming to penetrating and anterior urethral injuries, these should be explored. The area of injury should be examined and devitalized tissue should be debrided carefully to minimize tissue loss. Defects of up to 2 cm on the bulbar urethra and up to 1.5 cm on the penile urethra can be repaired primarily via a direct anastomosis over catheter with fine absorbable sutures. This is the preferred method of repair for these in injuries. Longer defects should never be repaired emergently. These should be reconstructed at an interval following the injury to allow for resolution of other injuries and proper planning of the tissue transfers required for the repair.
urinary diversion can be accomplished with a suprapubic catheter during this interval now coming to guidelines the two, uh, 2021 european association association of urology urogenital uh, trauma uh, has you uh, has prescribed some guidelines for diagnosis and management of urethral trauma first of all evaluate urethral injuries with flexible cystoscopy and or retrograde urethrography treat complete blunt anterior urethral, uh, urethral injuries by immediate urethroplasty if surgical expertise is available otherwise perform suprapubic diversion with delayed urethroplasty treat partial blunt anterior urethral injuries by suprapubic or urethral catheterization coming to posterior urethral injuries posterior urethral ruptures should be treated by suprapubic or transurethral uh, catheterization early endoscopic realignment when feasible should be performed do not repeat endoscopic treatments after failed realignment manage complete posterior urethral disruption with suprapubic diversion and deferred at least 3 months uh, urethroplasty any questions feel free to uh, drop in a message thank you